Mixed mode, what is it? It's, um, it's probably the way you operate your house. So in your house, if it's nice outside, you crack open a window, some nice cool breeze comes in, and then you think, God, it's getting a bit hot. Uh, what am I going to do? Oh, no, I'll close the window, hopefully, and I'll turn on the air con. So you've got two modes there. One mode is a natural ventilation mode, which is how all buildings were designed and used up until about the 50s, um, last century. <coughs> so you need cool air coming in because inside the space, just like this space we're sitting in now, there's all sorts of heat loads, so there's lights, people and equipment. Um, and we need to flush out both the heat and the odour and the CO2. So that's, that's natural ventilation, You've got to have openable windows or openable things. Uh, then the other mode is what we traditionally think of as air conditioning, which simply means we close up the building and we're not actually bringing much fresh air in. We're usually recycling that air and that leads to some of the problems with air conditioning and it's fairly energy intensive as well. And all mixed mode is, is sometimes using uh, natural ventilation when the conditions are, are nice, when it's coolish and sometimes using air conditioning uh, when we need to, when it's too hot. So that, that's mixed mode, which sounds really simple and probably 80% of the houses in Australia use a mixed mode system, but when you propose that or look at the buildings in the commercial and public building sector, it's a lot less common uh, for reasons which we'll get into. So why would we um, want to just have a traditional air-conditioned building, um, particularly in, in this domain of commercial buildings. Well, it's, it's low risk. Everyone knows what they're going to get. They're going to get quite a lot of plant, which is one of the negatives, so it's going to take up a fair bit of space. But on the plus side, people are going to be pretty comfortable. Um, there's a known cost because we do it, and it's just, it's just common. So if you propose something that's common um, and well understood, it's a low risk for the consultants uh, and a low risk, particularly if you're developing a speculative office building, which a lot of commercial buildings are. Um, if you can say to your tenant, yeah, it's just like the one I built last year, then um, that's low risk financially for you. It's comfortable, um, particularly on hot days. Uh, the air conditioning keeps you cool or warm as required. But on the uh, downside, there's a higher capital cost involved in putting the air conditioning in. So there's ducts and chillers and whatnot uh, compared to just naturally ventilating. Uh, and there's also a footprint cost. So particularly in the office domain, commercial building domain, it's all about dollars per square metre. And for air conditioning, probably every uh, five levels, about half that level is going to be dedicated to plant. So you're looking at maybe 10% of your floor area, plus you've got all these ducts all over the place, plus your floor to floor heights generally have to be higher. So it does have a big impact on your spatials if you're, if you're air conditioned. Um, naturally ventilated buildings are therefore cheaper, more compact, a lot more simple, um, but obviously they get too hot and too cold sometimes. So let's try to get the best of both worlds with mixed mode ventilation. The best aspect, I guess, is you have a connection with the outside. So in terms of health for the occupants, the sick building syndrome of the 80s, which has partly continued, was basically stemmed from being kind of cooped up with not enough fresh air. So with a mixed mode building, when the conditions are right, you can open up your building and you get lots and lots of fresh air in um, and you know what's happening outside which is just generally good for your sanity and um, it means that you, you know when it's getting light and dark outside and you have a connection with the temperature so you don't walk out and go, oh my god, it's really hot, I didn't even realise. Um, the second biggest benefit is uh, energy use and that's usually why it's uh, proposed because particularly if the climate's right, like Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne to an extent, and other temperate climates, you can just turn off the aircon for say half the year and we'll look at 
what that number might actually be. Uh, and that's the biggest benefit um, that clients are sold on, usually. The downsides, and there are quite a lot of downsides, um, is that it's just complex. So it's complex and expensive, and there's really no getting away from that because you, you essentially need an air conditioning system that can still cope with the, high, the hottest day in summer. So you've, you've got an air conditioned building and you're adding on naturally ventilated areas, which means you've got to add on more controls, you've got to have openable windows, um, and all the things we're about to talk about. So the capital cost is going to be higher. It's almost a, almost a given. Um, but the running cost will be lower. So depending on the application, um, that may or may not uh, suit your client. So what's it actually look like? And um, we can see from some of these photos that it can be fairly complicated from a controls point of view because you've got air conditioning controls that we can see as well as potentially ceiling fans as well as um, controls that open and close the windows. This is a, a nice example in um, Mount Isa where it actually worked quite well with the mixed mode. It's a, it's a smaller building, it's a commercial, commercial building uh, and they used ceiling fans, openable windows and then um, when they need to, because it gets pretty hot in Mount Isa, they turn on their aircon and they've got localised controls to do that. So that, we'll get into the, the detail of that in, in the next section, but um, let's have a look at the, the climate because mixed mode is, is based on having a nice enough climate for enough hours that you can open the building. So what does nice enough mean? It's usually about 16 because it's easier to heat up a building than it is to cool it. So 16 degrees outside to about 26 degrees outside. If it's 26 degrees outside and you've got that temperature air coming in, it still can be comfortable if you've got air movement, but any hotter you're going to start to get temperature complaints. Um, so what our goal when we look at any building that might potentially be mixed mode, we need to understand the climate and work out how often do we think that building's going to be open and is it worthwhile to go to the effort of opening up that building? So if you say to me, I'm thinking of putting a mixed mode building in the Sahara or in the Arctic Circle, then I'm probably going to say no because that building's going to have openable windows which is shut year round. So what's Brisbane look like? Um, the, if you think what the average temperature in Brisbane is, uh, I often ask students, what do you reckon? And the, the general answer is about 25 degrees kind of year round. Um, which is interesting because the real answer is about 20 degrees. So 20 degrees is right in that sweet spot of not too hot, not too cold. Um, but we perceive Brisbane to be hotter because we've got this relatively long summer that um, has a big impact on us. Um, so short version is that Brisbane's actually really good and hopefully you're not just going to work in Brisbane as an architect, you're going to work you know, throughout Australia or throughout the world. So first step is to get the climate data, which is really widely available now, and just get a handle on what the average temperature in each month is and if it's out of that range of 16 to 26, you're probably going to have to air condition. If it's in that range, or even maybe a bit cooler, um, then you'll be able to open it up. So there's, um, there's a common question that's asked for every one of these buildings that I've done by the client, which is well, how, how much air conditioning money or running costs am I going to save, which boils down to how often can I turn the air conditioner off. And uh, there's been situations where different consultants have given wildly different answers and so the question has been, well, what really is the answer? Um, and it really depends on how you work it out and what your assumptions are. So um, we can see here that if you assume that comfortable temperatures are just below 24 degrees, you might get a certain percentage there. Um, then if you look at a more sophisticated method of thermal comfort, which, it, which adapts, you can get down to about a 20% 
time when you need air conditioning and so 80% of the year in theory you don't. And then that, the very last one here which is no air conditioning but really good design, good shading, good thermal mass, lots of openings where required and really good air movement through ceiling fans. In theory, and I stress only in theory, you can get down to only a few percent of the hours of the occupied year uh, where, you, where you need to air condition. In practice it doesn't work like that, but it's a good place to start because we know that if we do a really good design, we can have a really good result and it's just a matter of getting the design as good as we can. One of the, the case studies here um, we can see is in Mount Isa, which is, which is really hot. Um, this building works quite well and it's got all of those things that we're going to look at um, and which I mentioned before. And it shows, um, contrary to what most architects thinks, think, uh, that ceiling fans can look nice. Um, so in here we can see that you can actually hardly see them. Um, there's lots of thermal mass on the floor that we can see and there's not too much, if, if you look at this photo, there's not too much glazing that we can see because glazing is generally hot. Um, so that, that's kind of where we're, at, we're aiming for in terms of all the, all the bits and pieces. Um, in this next section with this chart we're going to have a look um, at uh, breaking down the climate a little bit more and um, looking at what we're going to do for each section of those climates. Yeah.